100 years ago at Crystal Palace. And my grandfather, with his sister, remember he wasn't married then, Olive hadn't come on the scene yet, she came five years later. He's reviewing the troops, I don't know how many troops there were there all together, and then he suddenly came across uh, a half a dozen or a dozen of young ladies, all dressed up with a sort of scout uniform on, they had, except they were wearing skirts rather than trousers, because women didn't wear trousers in those days, at least I don't think they did, but they had their skirts on and they had their scout hats and they had their scarves on and they had their staves there, and I can just imagine these young ladies approaching Grandfather. Here he is, the famous Baden Powell, General Baden Powell, goodness me, but they did. Sybil Kennedy was one of the main leaders, and I knew Sybil. Anyway, they approached him. And I can imagine my grandfather saying to them, What the devil do you think you are? Oh, they said, We want to join our brothers. We want to go camping. We want to go cooking. We want to do this. We want to go that, and so on. So he turned around to his sister, and I can just imagine grandfather saying to his sister, as he, what are you going to do about it? As he did something about it. Uh, uh, urged, urged on by her mother, um, Henrietta, who believe me was a Victorian monster, she really was, to her, the law is the law, you abide, you abide by what I say. That was the kind of mentality in those days. Anyway, Aunt, uh, grandma, great grandmother Henrietta said, Yes, Agnes, you should do something about this. So she promptly set about writing the first handbook, How Girls Can Build an Empire, or Build the Empire, sorry, which was your equivalent of Scouting for Boys. And so she wrote this book. Agnes was the most incredible person, she really was. Um, having six brothers, what did she do? She followed exactly what her brothers did. They went camping, sailing. Um, her younger brother, Major Baden uh, Fletcher Smythe, Baden Powell, was uh, one of the early aviators of his time. Now remember, this is all going back to before we had aeroplanes. And Agnes, of course, was um, put in a, in a balloon. Um, under a balloon, and she even held the height record in those days for staying up longer than anybody else. And with these experiences, for example, she was the only woman for many years to be um, a, a member, to be a member of the Royal Aeronautical Society. A, a feat unheard of at that time. When you believe that at that time, ladies of that nature in England then, they, there were certain protocols that they had to uh, abide by. For example, uh, a decent young lady went to a decent school and then they were usually presented to, at court, which meant they meant the king and queen of, of the day and the royal family in England at, of the day. They had to learn how to walk properly they had to learn how to curtsy properly, had to do all these sort of things. They had to learn to sew, knit, darn, do all those sort of womanly functions. Um, not go flying, not go swimming, would you believe? Not go camping. In other words, Agnes took on all these unladylike activities of the time. She was quite a tomboy, she really was. A remarkable person. Do you know, the day the war broke out, she marched up to the British War Office. And now she's in her 70s at this stage, probably a little, oh, about the middle 70s, she walked up to the uh, British War Office and she said, knocked on the counter, and she said, young man, you are going to have, we're going to have a war, I believe. You're going to have a lot of young men coming up here, volunteering to go and do their service somewhere. Now, most of them will not know how to shoot, so I'll teach them to shoot. Now, here you've got a middle-aged 70-year-old, a marksman. Absolutely incredible. And when the war was finished, she heard about this new thing called, this new flying contraption called a helicopter. She's now in her 80s, and she decides she's going to learn to fly a helicopter. 
this was the person who gave us guiding, would you believe? But I should also add that um, my grandmother, who was by this time married to BP, came on the scene, a very much younger woman, a woman of enormous capacity, of enormous energy. And if it wasn't for her foresight, if it wasn't for Agnes's foresight in the rights of women to a fair go, as we say in Australia, I don't know that the Girl Guide movement would have ever got off the ground. But it did. It not only got off the ground, but it is now flourishing. And it takes people like you to continue on with the good work and worthwhile efforts. I think, if I may just leave you all with this one message. BP had a dream, and the dream was there was no future in this warlike stuff. What we need is we need world peace. And if we're going to get world peace, what better way of presenting or obtaining world peace than through the youth of the world? Hence, the Scout annual, the Scouts Jamboree, World Jamborees every four years. What does that do? It brings members of the Scouting Movement and indeed, I'm happy to say, Guiding Movement together every four years from all parts of the world. And what do they do? They do badge swapping, they're talking, they're communicating one person to another. That's what we're about at the end of the day. And my belief is, is that this is our future. As long as men love women and we continue to have children, that is our insurance policy for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming.